Okay, great. Let's Should get started. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome to our third and our final stop of the 2021 Design Crawl series. I am Jen Stone with uh, IADA Oregon Chapter, and we're super excited to have Sheena Brittingham and Rachel Sawaya with us today from Vita Design. Um, they're going to give us a virtual tour, tour of their um, project, The Rodney. This project won Best in Category for Living at the 2020 IIDA Design Awards. Um, and before we get started, just please make sure that all of your microphones are muted. Um, we're definitely encouraged to uh, drop any questions you have into the chat throughout the presentation, though. If we don't catch your question in real time, we'll be sure to cover it in the Q&A um, after the presentation. And I want to remind all of our attendees that they're invited to participate in the Design Crawl Passport to win some really fantastic prizes from our generous sponsors. Um, to participate, you'll need to complete the associated page in, put the, um, in the passport for today's stop. And participants will earn one raffle entry per, uh, per completed page. So the more stops you attend and complete, the better your chances are of winning. Uh, completion of the bonus page will give you one additional raffle entry as well. And today's passcode is PEARL for this stop. Um, you can email your completed passports to info at iida-or.org and use the subject line design crawl passport. The deadline to submit your passport is tomorrow, um, April 16th by 5 p.m. And we'll pop the passport link in the chat right now. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Kate Stewart, our current IIDA president. Thank you, Ben. Hi, everyone. I'd like to take a moment and thank all our generous sponsors that made the Design Crawl possible today. Thank you to our Design Crawl stop sponsors, Source, Dal Tile, and Infinity Drain, our Ruby level sponsor, Mannington Commercial, our Sapphire level sponsors, Matter Contract and Arizona Tile, our Topaz level sponsor, Materials Inc., Garrison and Associates, Pacific Mat, Loom, and Armstrong Flooring. Our passport sponsors, Herman Miller, Cambria, Willis, and Coruscant. Thank you to our event sponsors, and also want to thank all of our annual sponsors for this year at the Platinum level GVD Architects, Mohawk Group, Source, and ZGF Architects at the titanium level, absolute resource, and at the cobalt level, absolute procurement, Bora Architecture and Interiors, and Solis. Thanks to all our annual sponsors. I'd like to now give the floor to this stop sponsor, Jeff Lang with Dow Tile, to introduce himself and say a few words. Hi, Jeff. Are you here? <laughs> Everybody can you hear me okay? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, so my name's Jeff Lang. You guys probably know me already a little bit. Uh, I know, recognize obviously a couple of your faces. Uh, it's I'm really happy that Dow Tile can support the IIDA and uh, sponsor uh, this stop. Uh, it's awesome to be able to have a place where you can learn and where you can actually collaborate with people. So I'm glad that the IIDA exists for that purpose. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Dow Tile, we are the largest ceramic and porcelain manufacturer here in the United States and in North America. We have over 12 factories in just the United States and uh, obviously can provide EPDs, HPDs, all that good stuff for your material. Six out of 10 tile products that are sold in North America are actually a Dow Tile product out of one of those Dow Tile families. So uh, please reach out if you have any technical questions or even just are looking for what was that line that had that in there? Uh, always happy to help, and thanks for having me. Thanks, Jeff. And thanks again to all of our Design Crawl sponsors. With that, we're ready to get started. I'd like to introduce our speakers today, Sheena and Rachel from Vita Design. Hi, Sheena and Rachel. Please introduce Hello. yourself, and let's get started with our tour of the Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Rachel. I'll start. I'll just kind of kick things off here. I will attempt to share correctly. Give me one minute. All right. So you should be able to just see our website, which is right here. I think I'll just kind of scroll through this and tell you a little bit about Vita, just taking a few minutes to start. 
You guys probably know who we are. Um, Alexis Melnicki from our team is um, part of the AIDA um, uh, team and she's at a lot of events. So I know you're familiar with her. Uh, Vita Design is about 12 years old. We're, we're going on 12. Um, we're up to about 45 now. So this is not a current picture. This is pre-pandemic, obviously. So it's a couple years old. Um, we're up to 45 folks though at Vita. So I think, you know, we've, we feel like we're at the mid to larger size for the Northwest in terms of an interior design only firm. And really our work centers around um, creating a boutique design experience for the multifamily market, specifically urban infill, urban multifamily projects, um, mid-rise and high-rise. We also have some um, hotels that we're excited about, you know, getting into our portfolio in the last couple of years. So we do have some hotel work and other um, other hospitality work going as well. We work with mostly developers. Our developer uh, clients are from um, all over the United States, and we're currently working in nine states: um, Oregon, Washington. See if I can get this right: Oregon, Washington, California, Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, Arizona. Um, so I might have missed something, but that that's um, what we're up to these days. And we're um, really excited about expanding and, and um, getting to work in these other states. And um, it's just given us a really great experience, a broad, diverse um, portfolio and client base. We take a lot of pride in our culture. So when you go on our website, you can see kind of our team members on the about section if you ever want to poke around. Um, <laughs> gives you a sense of who we are and, and sort of what, what everybody's all about, you know, just a, just a little taste of their character. Like you just, uh, everybody has their own special question. And anyway, it's just a fun way to kind of see our team. So with all of that said, I think I will go ahead and just transition to go out of here. I know how to use the website. Let's try to get it. Um, go into the Rodney and just get started with the Rodney. So the Rodney is a high rise, um, 18 levels. Is that right, Sheena? Do I have that number right? 16. 16. Yeah. Okay, 16 stories. <laughs> Thank you. It's at 14th and Gleason. So um, interesting location right by the 405. Um, and uh, I think in terms of concept for the Rodney, our goal was to create something that would become the new classic. I'm gonna play this video and I'm going to talk at the same time and I'm gonna to try to expand it. So this is all um, sort of just panning through the Rodney and Sheena's gonna go into details, but um, the idea here was to pay homage to the past and then also um, push, to, you know, push towards the future. So I didn't want to be um, old fashioned in any way, just like a new look at the new urban classic. The concept was classic edge. Um, so that kind of tells the story actually. <laughs> There's wonderful views from this building. It's absolutely spectacular in terms of views. I think, I think the views exceed definitely what we all expected. Um, this is kind of panning through some of the residential uh, units and then we're gonna go up overhead here. Um, there's some interesting paneling details and then you know lighting and little bits here and there that have a nostalgia factor. Um, that's what we were going for, but reinterpreted nostalgia. So it doesn't feel like your grandma's living room, but oh my gosh, that fabric right there reminds me of <laughs> an older home. That sort of thing is just what we kept trying to do throughout the building. We have some really great artists we worked with, um, custom furniture all over the place. Um, a lot of local, um, yeah, local folks came together to make this happen. So, you know, Sheena will give you more information on, on those, on that team and, and all the great people we're able to work with. This project is with Ingram Moist and Architects. I should be saying that too. <laughs> They're a fantastic partner. Absolutely key from day one was the alignment we had with the architecture team on this project. Um, so that was incredible. Um, we all had the vision. We all um, stayed in it to the bitter end and, uh, <laughs> and got it done. And it also is a lead gold project as well. 
So that's pretty cool. I think it's gold, right? Wheat gold or platinum gold? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think it's gold. Great. Well, Sheena, I'm going to hand it off to you. Great. How's your yes, technology? Is it good? Technology can, you see, good? can you see my screen with the plan? Yes, thumbs up from Alex. That means we're good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. Thanks for being a pal. Um, first of all, I want to set a disclaimer that I'm not actually trying to wear sunglasses. My I've got these transition lens and their lenses and they're turning into sunglasses right now. So just so you know, I feel like I needed to tell you that in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, so here's the plan. This is the lobby layout. Um, we started out in this project with a collaboration, a potential collaboration um, with Central Office, which is a co-working um, company. I'm sure you probably all know about them. They've got different office locations sprinkled throughout Portland. Um, so we did have a really strong kind of co-work program that we were trying to push here. And initially we were actually going to be um, kind of partnering up and having central office have a satellite office here. Um, so we kind of based this kind of left side around what their needs would be. And then it ended up turning out that they backed out, but we're really thankful that we started out that way because co-working has been more and more important over time. And um, so it's kind of what you see here. We wanted to provide a lot of flexibility with these work pods. Um, these individual work pods. And then we also have some kind of unique workspaces like a conference room that's more of a lounge zone that has a table. Um, so you can really get flexible with how you work. Um, we also have a large conference room. So we'll see that too as we go through the photos, what that looks like. Um, and then a large kind of open co-working area as well. Um, and then there's this concierge desk that we really wanted to feel a little bit more hospitality-esque. So we called this sort of like our vibe space, our um, our leasing team needs needed to be really um, kind of setting the tone for the building and for the vibe of the space. So I think the Holland team has done a really good job doing that. Uh, the personalities there on site are great and they've got really great um, customer service there and they have a kombucha tap so they can serve people drinks when they come in, which is pretty awesome. Um, so that's the kind of entry zone here with this concierge desk. And then off to the side, we have this great circular uh, sofa and um, we worked with the good mod on that so you'll see the photos of that too and once I pull up the pictures um, and then Holland has this kind of more open integral leasing concept so they have this large desk table hybrid that um, has a central power track in the top where you can store power cords and also plug in in a small leasing office um, along the glass is some nice lounge seating and then there's a grade change. So there's kind of the secondary lobby entry down below here that became sort of another little waiting area um, for the restaurant that's actually at this location. Um, so the hope is that there'll be this really great connection to retail. Um, so there is an opening here when this does get leased up, which hopefully will be before too long. I think it's been kind of a struggle to lease spaces right now, um, but the hope is that that will be a restaurant and then we can open up here and have this great kind of collaboration between these spaces. Um, and then we tucked this ramp back here. It's a nice little hidden ramp that leads to restrooms and kind of takes care of the ADA concerns for accessibility. Mailroom is large, but kind of tucked back in this zone here um, next to the workroom. We've got parcel lockers here and then um, the elevator lobby is tucked back. So when you walk in, you see this really great visual to the elevator lobby. Um, you'll see in the photos that we ended up doing this really great media wall that plays old fashioned videos of Portland, which was pretty special. It took a lot of um, coordination to get that to work out, but we're really happy with how that turned out. And then upstairs on the 16th floor, this is the Sky Lounge. So this has these great, amazing views of the city. Um, you can see a lot of the mountains from up here. So you um, walk out into this great elevator lobby and then um, into this amazing kind of open all glass box with uh, incredible views. And we, up here, we really wanted this to be a space that multiple parties could hang out. So there's two dueling islands. Um, we felt like that would be great for smaller groups. And we're really happy that we did that now because I think more and more people want to segregate a bit and 
um, space out in these amenity areas. So that was happy a happy accident that <laughs> that we did it that way. Uh, and then there's this really large U-shaped sectional sofa that's built in and then uh, mirrored TVs above that. And then we, we coordinated and designed the roof deck outdoor barbecue zone as well. So you can see that in some of the photos. Um, there's an amazing view from 405 of the tile that's up here, which we really get excited about. We think that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna flip over to the photos and then we can, can you still see my screen? Can you see the photos? Yes, thanks Alex. Okay. So here's the view of the main lobby and tree doors are to the left. Um, we were really inspired by tile floors and old buildings and just the interesting things you can do with mosaics. So again, as Rachel said, with our concept being um, classic edge, we wanted to design something that was custom that had sort of more contemporary motifs to them, but also felt very nostalgic and classic. Um, so our team custom designed this tile using Appiani tiles, and we did this really cool custom Portland kind of floor mat inlay. Um, and this ended up actually winning the Ceramics of Italy People's Choice Awards last year, which was cool. I had never heard of that contest, but <laughs> when we saw it, we were like, we should enter this one. So we were excited that that won. Um, we spent so much time designing this tile floor. So to, to see it get some attention was really exciting for our team. We were all really pumped about it. Um, and it's just is so eye-catching and it really, I think, just draws you in, especially because that first um, impression is that elevator lobby. I think it's great to have something beautiful to look at. Um, and then this curved sofa here, we collaborated with the Good Mod in Portland to make that. They custom made that for us with this great kind of metal back design. Um, our client felt pretty strongly about not having super deep grooves in these vertical channels. So we worked with them too on creating this stitching detail that wasn't very deep. So you, people don't get you know items stuck in the cushions and they don't get super dirty. So it's easy to clean, but it's got this great detail to it. Um, we worked with uh, a lot of different Portland shops, Hive to purchase these Moroso sofas that are super awesome. Um, we've got some Allied Maker sconces in here, Dal tile on the columns are beautiful. Um, I think this element was really important to us from the beginning was incorporating these um, kind of classic materials like subway tile um, and bringing that kind of indoor outdoor feel for, at this facade. So the exterior wall is also clad in that same black subway tile that's wrapping the columns. Um, but above the columns is the concrete. So you get to kind of see this like old and new structure together, um, which was cool to us. It was kind of an important feature to be able to incorporate um, and expose the structure in a way that kind of makes it feel a little bit more fresh. Um, and then, yeah. A couple questions that um, kind of correlate with this view. Somebody asked who made the blue um, lounge chairs? Did you say, do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember, that's the one I didn't write down. I can I'll definitely, I can send a link to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Rachel's yep. on it. And then um, it. somebody asked, are there rambling rod videos in the elevator? <laughs> I saw that one. <laughs> rambling Alex. rod. I don't know. And this? I don't Alex. I don't know. That was an Alex. That sounds really Alex y <laughs> question. And some people have to know who rambling rod is. I'm not the only old guy from Oregon. <laughs> Or maybe I, I am. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed that I don't know who that is, Alex. Now I'm very embarrassed. I know who it is. I used to watch that show all the time. Oh, right. I'm going to go watch it right after this. That's my promise to you. So this is the view. Um, did that cap? Did all the questions get answered from the last? Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here's the view looking from the door. So again, you can see how this carries through all the way to the elevator lobby. And then we have this great um, digital screen with the video footage. Um, we had to work with the city to get all of these great old historical videos. Um, and they had to change the aspect ratio to be vertical instead of horizontal. So some of them are sort of distorted, but it still looks amazing. And uh, we're really happy with how that turned out. Um, this sign here, we used to, it used to say, hello, gorgeous, which I thought was a little more interesting, but um, the Rodney's 
cool too, I guess. But yeah, that's, it's, this is how you know where you are is by that sign. Um, <laughs> then we worked with Elizabeth Leach Gallery on a lot of the art. So um, most of the art in this lobby is from there as local artists. Um, these pieces are from by Julia Mangold. Um, they're really cool, especially as you get closer to them. It's layers of blue vellum that are on top of each other. And we we tried like a hundred things here, and this was the only series that we were just like so sold on, and we pushed really hard to get our client to to go for it because they were pretty expensive, but um, the simplicity and minimalism of them was like so perfect. Uh, and then the fact that there is this amazing texture and when you get close to them, they just like really draw your eye in. We just love how that completed the space. And here's a view of another piece. This one is by, it's called Reflection 2016 by Charlene Liu. Um, this is a really cool laser cut uh, on vellum piece with acrylic. Um, and we had a custom acrylic box made to to protect it. So it's got this kind of interesting wood top and bottom, and then there's a full acrylic box around it so no one can come and destroy it, but it's got this really awesome kind of three-dimensional character to it um, where it's these pieces layer and slide into this wood track. So if you ever go there, I really encourage you to go check out this project and go look at it. It's pretty special, even though it looks kind of I don't know, kind of small from this picture. It's really unique piece. Um, and then this is this piece back here is on wood uh, called Carpathian Symmetry and it's by Shane McAdams. Um, so we also purchased this one through Elizabeth Leach Gallery. It's amazing in person as well. It's this kind of cool burl wood um, with this mirrored effect um, of this mountain painting that's overlaid. And um, we, we loved how that turned out as well. Um, back beyond here, you can see the little co-working pods and we numbered these. So we created these custom sconces that were above each door and these were all numbered so that they can be um, reserved by the by the residents based on the conference room number. Another question about the light fixture actually, the one above the hospitality counter, is that mm -hmm. the same sconce used elsewhere or is it a custom yes. piece? This is also custom. So all of these larger scale lights were custom made. Um, they were, I will say we initially um, had them bid out by a different vendor who then ended up making them. So the quality of them wasn't our favorite. I mean, I think there was definitely, it looked great and they're very impactful, but um, some of the lights have a little bit of spotting you can kind of see on the globe. But overall, we're really happy with the aesthetic and this um, company came in within budget. So the contractor went with them. The same thing over this conference table back here as well as the same vendor who made those two. So they all have the same kind of globe effect over this table as well. Um, we custom designed this leasing table um, we wanted this to function really well and be super durable. So we've got this great copper edging detail with a quartz top. And then we designed this trough in the center. So the leasing team can plug in their laptops. They can also store the big laptop packs down into the trough. So it's super functional. Um, it's my pet peeve to see a bunch of big um, laptop packs on a beautiful table. So we were really happy that that solved that problem. Um, and then back here is a refurbished mailbox that we actually found, we got it from City Liquidators in Portland and we stored it for like maybe a whole year before it was installed. Um, one of our team members found it and we had this idea to do something like this and we were just really excited when we found something that would work perfectly and we designed around it. So the sizing fit in there perfectly. Um, and then we've got these two slabs of marble on either side with an LED light. Love this art. So this is kind of the back ramp area with plywood walls cladding the space. Another shot of the sofa. And then I wrote the source for the blue chairs in the chat. Oh, thanks, Rachel. And um, there's a lot of copper throughout as well. You'll see kind of carried through all the spaces. So we've got this cool cop copper partition wall that um, is on the edge of that lowered area, lowered lobby. And this is another little co-work zone so people can come over here and work on their laptop, plug in, this has integral power. And then we worked with the GoodMod to, 
to design these custom height ADA height stools that are super cool, metal, black metal with a leather seat. This is probably my favorite shot of the space. Um, the flooring is a porcelain tile as well. So it's through porcelainosa, really large scale. Um, it's got a beautiful matte finish that I think worked really well with the space. The scale of it was great being that it's such a large space. Uh, and then this is a great shot to see kind of how we clad the exterior wall with this same subway tile. Um, and then we have these Allied Maker sconces up above. And then generally we wanted the overall lighting to be really kind of more clean and modern and go away. So we um, have this really clean white ceiling with cylinder lights just to create the overall architectural lighting. Here's a nice shot of that counter with the integral power and those great stools. Also want to say the ply boo on the walls in there. Did you already talk about that one? I said ply boo, but I didn't talk much about the, the detail for this was really intense. Um, I can go back. Um, we yeah, want it. We had them. Sorry, it works really well, though. It does. <laughs> it's really quiet in there. I mean, acoustically, it yeah. works great. Um, we had Plybu custom do a custom stain to get these two color tones. And then um, the way that this was designed, because it is acoustic, we had to have kind of an additional acoustical layer added um, beyond the gyp. So it was a pretty thick wall assembly. Um, but we felt like it really, it really works well. So we're happy with the result. It was a complicated installation for sure, but it's beautiful. Here's our co-work area. Um, we've got these little divider walls and um, interior kind of faux storefront here with these metal mullions. So their little lounge area. We custom designed these banquets with this great panel back. Here's the view to the pods. So each one has its own number. And then we wanted to have a mirror here just to really um, elongate the space and bring in more light back in that hallway. Then up to the upstairs, the Sky Lounge space, um, just incredible views up here. I think that's kind of the most exciting part of this is just the, the amount of glass that we had. We were just really excited to design a space that allowed for that and um, just really captures the beauty of Portland all around you. So we wanted the interior design to support that by being very classic and beautiful and lovely and um, not overly flashy, but also kind of stands on its own as just a beautiful classic space. So the flooring is a faux parquet floor. It's um, a porcelain tile. And then we've got copper cladding on the kitchen, marble slab, backsplash, little TV surround, and then this reeded glass kind of creates this nice divider from the entry. These islands um, each have their own kind of angled design. It's kind of hard to see from this photo. You can kind of see how this leg angles back. That's another place we wanted to detail to make it feel a little bit more unique and edgy, give it that angle. Um, so it takes away a little bit of the traditional sense of the space by kind of adding those angles and those more contemporary lines. We had, we worked with Trio Furniture who custom made these stools for us. They're beautiful, um, they're ADA height. And then you can see back here, this is our custom kind of mirror TV installation. So when the TV is off, we just wanted it to look like a beautiful wall that reflected the views from behind. Um, we don't love designing spaces around TVs. I think it's great when you can just enjoy a space and not um, be overwhelmed by TVs. So. And that was our way of doing that, incorporating it, because we know that it's important to people. I also wanted to sort of diminish its effect when it was turned off and people just wanted to hang out. And um, there is another TV here as well. Again, just see these incredible views. And um, we have banquettes on the opposite side as well uh, with LED token lighting. 
And then this detail, this trim detail, you'll see a lot of this in this space and as, as well as the elevator lobbies. Um, this is another way that we kind of wanted to push this classic edge concept by bringing in paneling, but doing it in a way that was unique and more um, fresh and exciting. Uh, we added in a bunch of these angles. We love how it turned out. Incredible view. This roof deck's awesome. Ingram did a really good job designing the deck and just adding in these architectural elements too that create a lot of impact. We love how this shadow line turned out. And then here's our beautiful barbecue zone um, that you can see really well from the freeway. Uh, I get really excited every time I drive on 405 and see it. I'm like, look at, there it is, it's so cute. Uh, we used this tile from Stone Source, it's called Puzzle. Um, and then these countertops are by Decton. They're a um, porcelain slab. Works really well here. It did get kind of hot. There's not a ton of shade up here. So that is one thing that um, kind of have to work around is the heat. And then these great graphics. Um, we worked with the local artist, Kate Blairstone, who created these amazing custom graphics at each elevator stop. So each elevator lobby has a different historical photograph that's integrated with a floral motif. And we just love the, the kind of pairing of these two, the black and white with the color and the floral and how I feel like it just reflects Portland so well. Um, just how beautiful it is, but also there's just like a, such a, a rich history. Um, we tried to incorporate as many bridges as we could too, because there are so many views of the bridges from the Sky Lounge. Um, and then each elevator lobby also has this, this trim detailing as well, which we really love. Corridors again are also very classic. They feel almost like more like a hotel with this great textured kind of tweed carpet pattern. Um, we had some custom lights made. And then up above, it's kind of hard to see from these photos. Um, this is a acrylic panel that has a reeded glass texture. So when you actually see it in person, it's got that kind of effect of a transom glass window. Sheena, who was the carpet manufacturer? I believe it was Interface. Are we talking about the corridor or down in the co-work? Yeah, the corridor. It might have been the co-working. Who did the other one too, just in case? That's oh man, let me see. I'll look them up real quick. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me just check out the this carpet. This was from Milliken. Mm -hmm. I think it's the color wash. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and then I believe that the quarter carpet was interface. Mm -hmm. The tweed battery. I will check that out. Yeah, it's interface Collins Cottage on the corridor. Thanks, Rachel. Um, here's another one of the graphics. I love this one. It's just so cool. There's the fire and everyone's all these old dandy men are watching the fire. <laughs> I think it's pretty great. It's a little trolley train. We, we work right on the train tracks at our office. We're in the inner Southeast and it's so loud. Um, so I like to see cute pictures of trains and makes me hate it a little bit less. Yeah. Appreciate. One thing about Kate Blairstone too, I mean, all these florals are her own creation. So mm -hmm. um, she does amazing floral work. So if, I mean, I, I'm going to put her name in the chat. If you just want a really pretty piece of art to look at in your home, I highly, I mean, just check her out. She has a great website. Yeah. And she's got a new line. I think she collaborated with a wall covering and fabric vendor. So she's creating fabric textiles now as well. And and more off the shelf wall covering line. It's incredible. The flooring in the elevator cabs is also custom designed by Kate. So it's got this really awesome floral print and we printed it on vinyl, um, which was something we had never done before, but I, I love it. I think it's really unique and it's unexpected to walk in and have a, a flowery floor in an elevator. It's another one. Lots of water shots. And then here's our model unit. Um, the units also have beautiful views. Great dial tile backsplash in here. Got this great subway, kind of beveled subway. 
which was kind of classic. And then the cabinetry itself was a little bit more modern. Um, we wanted to play up a unique way to do the two tones. So the panels are in the, a more of a gray finish and then the doors and the uppers are the wood, just gives it a little bit more, uh, more of a unique impact and contrast. And we picked all the furniture and the models as well. Great textures. This is another scheme. So again, kind of took the same approach, but in this one we had the wood look finish on the ends and then the doors and the uppers were the white to give it some contrast. Also meant to mention that Holland Partner Group is the client and also the um, contractor here. So they, they yes. self-perform all their work. So this is their construction team as well. Yeah, uh, this building also has two levels of penthouse units. So the upper two levels had upgraded finishes. So we also designed the upgraded um, palette packages and this one um, is one of those. So we did a different kind of more unique cladding on the island. Um, some really great Dal. I think this is Stone a la Mod Backsplash by Dal. It's really beautiful marble with this great textured pattern. Um, and then um, we carried this kind of interesting panelized detail at the soffit in the penthouses as well. And that is all of the photos. Are there any other questions? Anything you want me to flip back on? Yeah, so I'll post more questions in the chat. We did have one come up. Someone asked um, what you did for sustainability goals to reach that LEED gold certification. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it was just in the building itself, the way that um, it was built so in the architecture mm -hmm. um and then a lot of the materials we pick now you know are are so great and have recycled content um all led lighting was installed um i mean definitely using all energy star appliances so everywhere we could we we, we always opt to choose a more sustainable method in the materials that we select yeah that was about the extent of it you both could answer a design moment in the space that you're most proud of. Oh man, Rachel, you, you can choose start. one. <laughs> it's hard to choose. Mm -hmm. It's a tough one. Uh, I really, I really do like the way the paneling came out um, mm -hmm. up, up in the penthouse uh, lounge. I think the lounge was pretty successful. Um, I was just really, I think just the, the lounge itself is just stunning when you're in it and the mm -hmm. views are really, you know, spectacular, but also just the way that we brought all the new and the old together up there. I think it hits you the hardest up at the lounge, that contrast. And I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me, probably this mosaic floor at the entry. Oh, sorry. There's my daughter and all my things. Um, the mosaic tile was something that we spent a lot of time in on designing and I know I spent a lot of hours working with our team and with the reps um, and just seeing I think that was probably the element I was most excited about seeing installed because it is pretty awesome and yeah a lot of hard work went into it but I mean all of it I get I just I love the vibe of this building and I think definitely if you have a chance to go visit it I would recommend it it's got a really wonderful feel to it yeah. a lot of great light and yeah really cool vibes it, are yeah. these um condo units or apartments for rent they're apartments for rent wow yep it's definitely got a condo level feel to it though i mean holland definitely wanted to make this a kind of more of a legacy project for them so they wanted to Really spare no expense to make this great. And we did end up being within budget. There was actually some savings in the budget too. So um, we were able to work with them to come up with ways to, to do this in a way that wasn't extravagantly expensive too. It's always nice when that works out. <laughs> What's your client's feedback been then reaction to the finished project and are the apartments leasing really well? 
Yeah, uh, it's been really good. I mean, I I believe they're mostly leased up there. I don't know uh, if they're at hundred percent, but I think it's pretty successful. Yeah, when I went in the other day, it was not the other day. I always say that it was like <laughs> six months ago. Anyway, um, the other day it was full. I mean, they're maxed out. They'd taken some of the model apart too because they just eventually lease it. And every co-working pod was full. I mean, as you would want mm -hmm. that. So it seems like it's pretty, pretty vibrant. It's mm -hmm. going well. They were really happy with the results and they're also really, really just so pleased about the award um, this year and just really honored. Um, so a lot of, a lot of pride from the client for sure. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I was going to ask about those work pods. I bet those are really popular during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And all that outdoor amenity space has to be great for the residents. Um, okay, maybe you could tell me what the most challenging part of the project was now. <laughs> um, probably the AV. So dealing with the um, detailing of this video wall here and then also that mirror. TV was a challenge. Um, the mirror has to be like a special kind of mirror that's two-way and it's like uh, anti-static. It's, it's like a very specific mirror product, but the mirror around the TV didn't have to be that product. It could just be normal mirror. So we spent a ton of time figuring out the exact perfect match of mirror tone um, because they do really vary in color. Um, so just detailing out how this panel was going to work. There was like a clip on panelized section of the trim around the TV mirror. Um, so this is all very, very intense to figure out. I think this is the biggest challenge for me. Rachel, what do you think? Uh, yeah, you definitely were in the weeds on that one. I <laughs> <laughs> spared that part um for me it was the in and out and the in and out of um um the co-working um mm -hmm. folks and just how how many times we had to change the program in the lobby I mean we're talking yeah. like probably I don't know 10 times maybe full mm -hmm. full revisions and so that was kind of tough and I think we kept thinking it would continue to change until it was literally framed up so mm -hmm. <laughs> it ended up working out though. Yeah. Okay, well, I'm not seeing any more questions in the chat. Just a lot of praise for saying it's a beautiful project and it is really, really nice. Um, so I think I'll have Jen close us out. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I wish we were all on that rooftop right now ending this. I, be know. I know. That sounds <laughs> nice. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Sheena and Rachel. Um, that was really fantastic. Such a beautiful project. Um, thanks again to our sponsors and everyone who joined us this evening. Um, just another reminder to fill out your passports and email the completed forms to info at IIDA dash or.org. Um, again, the subject line is design crawl passport that you can use. Um, and if you complete the bonus page, you'll receive an additional raffle entry for those prices also. Um, and the deadline is tomorrow by 5 p.m. So get it in and hopefully um, you'll get a prize. Um, again, today's passcode is Pearl. And that concludes our 2021 design crawl series. Um, hopefully we see you again next year, all in person to tour some more awesome projects. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.